I'd like to take a look at a few more probability applications, and there are some properties that will help us in doing the calculations. One fact is that all probabilities lie between 0 and 1. If we think on percentage terms, it's between 0 and 100%. And if the probability of an event is equal to zero, that means zero chance of it happening and the event cannot occur. If the probability of an event is equal to one or 100%, then the event is certain to occur. So let's take a look at our example here. A coin is slipped three times and we're asked, what is the probability of getting exactly two heads? And in order to determine this, it helps to see the sample space. And since we're still novices at this, I'm actually going to write out the possible outcomes. So if a coin is flipped three times, every flip will produce either a head or a tail. So our possibilities are for the first flip getting a head, and then another head, and then another head. We could also get a head the first time, but then the next two flips would be heads and tails. And if our first uh, flip was still ahead, we might get tails and heads. But we might also get a head and then two tails. So these are the possible outcomes if the first flip is a head. Now, if the first flip is a tail, the second and third flips can produce the same outcomes as when the first flip was a head. So I'm just going to rewrite these outcomes for the second and third flips. So we see that there are a total of eight outcomes, and that will be our denominator. And now we want to find, for the probability of getting exactly two heads, we want to look at those outcomes that have exactly two heads. So looking through this list, head, 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 that does not qualify, but head, head, tail, this does have two heads, and so does this outcome. This one does not. And then we go over here, tail, head, head. That has exactly two heads, and these three do not qualify. So there are three possibilities, and that means that our probability of getting exactly two heads is going to be three-eighths. Next, let's look at the probability of getting no more than two heads. And this is a little bit more complicated because we need to define what is meant by no more than two heads. So if we think this through, no more than two heads could include having no heads, one head, or two heads. And we are going to add together these three probabilities. They are not independent events. They are all part of the same sample space. And so when we look at the uh, different combinations that are required to get zero heads, that would be tails, tails, tails. And that's only one event out of a possible eighth. So our probability of zero heads is one eighth. Our probability of getting one head, so if we look at the various uh, combinations that make one head, here we have heads, tails, tails. Here we have tails, heads, tails. And over here we have tails, tails, heads. So there are three of those events out of a possible eight. And we already determined that the probability of getting two heads is three eighths. So we can add these numbers together for a total of seven eighths. But there's actually a simpler way to calculate this probability. And here's where we're going to make use of our properties. All of our probabilities combined together will make an event certain, and that adds up to 100%. But we can also find the probability that something will not occur by subtracting from 1 or 100%. And so the probability of getting no more than three heads, well, the opposite of that is the probability of getting three heads. And there's only one of those, and so our probability of three heads is going to be one out of eight. And the probability of that not happening, we can obtain by taking the total probability of one and subtracting out that one-eighth probability 
and ending up with seven eighths, which is the same as we had gotten by adding the three different probabilities together. So this is a shortcut that you can take if you are able to understand the relationship between an event happening and not happening. And again, the sum of those two probabilities is going to be one. Let's take a look at an example which makes use of combinations. So there are seven students and three teachers in a club. And if four gift cards are randomly given, what is the probability that three students and one teacher will receive a gift card? First, let's take a look at the total sample space. There are 10 people altogether, seven students and three teachers, and four cards are going to be distributed. So if we don't put any restrictions on what types of people are chosen for the cards, we can say that there are 10 people and we're going to choose four. So we'll do this calculation, 10 choose four. And that's defined as being 10 factorial divided by 10 minus four, which is six factorial times four factorial. And we can simplify this by uh, writing out the 10 factorial, counting down until we hit a number that can be canceled, 10, 9, 8, 7. And then the 6 factorial, we don't need to expand because we know that that will be canceled out with the 6 factorial in the denominator. But the 4 factorial remains, so I will write out the factors 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And when we uh, do a little canceling here, the 4 and 2 will cancel with the 8. And so we're left with 630 divided by 3. And that will reduce down to 210. So this is the way of choosing four gift card recipients without putting any restrictions on whether they are students or teachers. Next, we want to determine the ways of choosing our gift re card recipients under restricted conditions. And so we have seven students, and we want exactly three of them to receive gift cards. So we're going to say seven choose three. And we have three teachers, and we want one to receive a gift card. So we'll write three choose one. And we can expand this notation to factorials and do the calculation. 7 choose 3 becomes 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 3 is 4 factorial times 3 factorial. And notice that the denominator, the numbers in the factorials, will add up to the number that's in the numerator. And then we go on to 3 choose 1, which is 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 1 factorial. And when we expand this out, it becomes 7 times 6 times 5 and 4 factorial will cancel out. So 4 factorial cancels the denominator. And then our 3 factorial I'll write as 3 times 2. And times 1 we don't need to write. And this will cancel with the 6 in the numerator. So that's our uh, first part. And then our 3 factorial we write as 3 times 2 factorial. And 2 factorial will cancel in the denominator. So we just have in the numerator 7 times 5 is 35 times 3, and that's equal to 105. So when we look at our total probability, what we want to see is the number of restricted choices, which is 105. And again, this is our probability. It's our restricted choices of 105 divided by the total number of choices, which is 210. And that actually works out to be 1 half.